Hello everybody, this is Ducey and today we are taking a look at the updates to Encounter Plus. There are some fantastic updates to 4.11.1. Um, when we bumped up to 11 there, we got some fantastic updates and I'm excited to show them to you today. But before I show them to you today, there's a couple things I want you to know about. One, free adventures. There are multiple free adventures you can go find on our Discord that are all set up for Encounter Plus. But the newest one, which is really designed to help new people to Encounter Plus uh, get their bearings and see how it all can work, is this You Wished For Adventure. You can see the URL right up here. It's being hosted on GitHub. I will put a link in the description to this adventure. And everything in here that was used to make it is available here to you for free, including uh, what you're, most of you are probably interested in, the dot module right here that you can download. So I'm just going to click that and hit download, and that will let us import into Encounter Plus this module. But check this out. There is also a PDF version of it right here. And this thing is incredible. Look how awesome this is. This was written by Nate Abdo. So he's he runs the AP Club, which is uh, an actual play series that you can go check out on YouTube. Let me bring it up here. So here's the AP Club, you can go subscribe, and he uses Encounter Plus for all of these D&D games. It is a great, fun way to learn, watch people having fun playing the game while also using Encounter Plus. There is another adventure, and I might be revealing this a little bit too soon here, but this Harvester of Souls adventure, um, I don't know if it is completely done yet, but there's another one that is uh, being built out. And again, there's tons of maps on our Discord that are all prepped for Encounter Plus already. Now, another quick shout out for those of you that are advanced, you've been watching for a while, and you want to make your own adventures for distribution in Encounter Plus, as well as that fancy PDF version of them, you might want to come check out the module packer, which I'll put a link to. So um, Jacob Johnson has written this module packer. It is uh, something that you add into via Microsoft VS Code, which runs on Windows and Mac. I am not an expert at it. I have fiddled with it. Um, but this lets you write everything in Markdown and then export it all as an Encounter Plus module and a PDF you can export straight from the same source. So if you really want to get into distributing your own or just really polishing the content that you put into Encounter Plus, it's worth checking this out. As always, lots of help on the Discord with um, learning how to use this stuff, or if you need any help getting any uh, adventures. Moving on, let's get to the meat of it. Encounter Plus, let's check out the updates. First, a few quick things that have changed before we really get into the nitty gritty. Under settings, a few things have moved. Who moved my cheese, as the old saying goes? So let me show you a couple things that have moved. The first is... Way down here, the web server stuff, if you're a subscriber, you've been playing online, these settings have all been moved into the settings option here, the settings area, instead of being under the external display. So they've got their own section under here now. Fantastic. And there's also been a change to the purchases, the in-app purchases. So previously, you had to pay separately for the battle map and for the use of the external screen. Well, now the external screen is completely free. So it will show initiative, who's up next on a separate display. You can pop up images, handouts, all that stuff is now free to connect over AirPlay or HDMI, or if you're using a computer, it pops up a second window, completely free. So now there is just the one battle map purchase and the battle map purchase lets you do maps, tokens, fog of war, spell area effects, layers, all that cool battle map stuff. If you purchase this stuff previously, don't worry, you can always restore purchases and the old ones will still pop all of your features back up. No problem, you do not have to buy again. The premium subscription, just as a reminder, unlocks the dynamic line of sight, animated tokens and auras, 3D dice, as well as that web client we mentioned earlier for you to be able to play online. We might come back to some of these new settings here later, but we're just focusing on what moved first. Again, here is the external screen that now pops up in its own window. And again, the only thing really to know here until we get into new stuff is that the web settings have moved over into settings. Our shortcuts across the top here are now in this kind of drop down menu to save some space up there, make it a little easier to get to. We've got this new button here, this plus button that lets you quickly make a new map. And that's really important because the legacy battle map, it, that is the map that would automatically load in the background 
is no longer a thing. It has been cleared out. And there's some technical reasons for that, but that was one that was always there kind of no matter what. So this way, clean slate, but if you like to just have a map ready to draw like you used to use the legacy battle map for, you can just create a new map and maybe it's the only map you have and that's fine. My only map, it's gonna be in my dragons campaign, cool. Save and here we are and now I can draw away as normal. So that's the new map button. A couple small changes, the dice roller and your messages that shows your roll history as well are now persistent, so if you click away, it thankfully does not make these disappear anymore, which is fantastic. On Mac, all these buttons kind of got expanded out, though on iOS, they'll probably still be under a little uh, three dot menu to show you all of these options. But if you're on Mac with the extra screen space, these are now all available at the same time. Looking down tools on the right side, under settings, things have, have just been rearranged a little bit under here to put the images uh, right at the top, which is probably the thing I use most often to just quickly throw an image. Remember, you can drag an image right into there too from Safari on your iPad, split screen, drag it in, it's fantastic. But it has just been rearranged a little bit in there and some of the tools have been moved to their own tools section. So grid align, walls generator, fit screen. Fit screen is still also under here. If I'm presenting a battle map, let me, I'm actually gonna present the way I normally do, which is just hold uh, your finger or on a Mac, right click to present the map that you have open up here. And when you're presenting, uh, you still have your fit screen option right there, but you can also get to it quickly right there now. And there's a new button here, which will show a player's version not the GM version of your line of sight, which we will look at later. So there's the things that have gotten moved around a little bit. And there are two other pretty big changes that are very related to each other, which is the new token workflow. And the other one is using the new context menus. Uh, so the new like right clicker or uh, tapping on a token. Now to show some of this stuff, I'm gonna load up that module, that You Wished for Adventure module that we downloaded earlier. There we go, it imported it, just had to open it up. Same on iPad, you can open it up from the Files app. So let's load a map from that adventure, You Wished for Adventure. There's a map in here, we'll load this guy up, copy and load. That will put a copy of it into my campaign right here. There it is, there's the copy that's loaded here already. Perfect. So the two biggest things that have changed are the token workflow, adding tokens to the map, and then interacting with them. There's a new kind of context menu for that. So let's add some tokens. First things first, I'm going to insert creatures and insert the party from the campaign. And here in this campaign, I've already added uh, Thorin, a party member. So we've got Thorn in here. Though, oh, that, there's another little change. If you uh, scroll on the mouse wheel, it now zooms properly on the back like it's supposed to the same way that it, you'd expect it to on the iPad. So that is a nice welcome uh, little update, yay. So we've got Thorn on here. I'm gonna tap on him. Here's our new context menu. There's a bunch of options. We'll go through all of them in a moment. But the first thing I'm gonna do is open them up and turn on He's got light vision there, line of sight enabled, perfect. So that's all turned on and I'm gonna to go to the map and make sure that the map, whoops, settings has line of sight turned on. There it is. So now when we move Thorn around, his torchlight shows what's, what's up. Now inside of this snake pit, I'm gonna click on this marker and uh, if I double click it, it will now open up this content. So that's a little bit different than it used to do before. So you now double click it to open up if you've got a uh, marker that has a link to content. And it says there's some poisonous snakes and a giant poisonous snake. So I'm just gonna click on poisonous snakes here and uh, we can click on this and load poisonous snake. Perfect, wonderful. And of course the other way we could load it is by searching, search for snake. Here's a poisonous snake. And you'll see this load button here. On iOS, if you click and hold on it, it will give you the option to load to map load to combat or to load to both. And that's a new option. Now on both Mac and iOS, let me just, I'm gonna hit the load button there to put another one down here. On both Mac and iOS, if you go into the settings, there's a new option here that is load mode. 
and it is currently set to map only. So you'll notice that when I've loaded them, they've added to the map, but they did not add to initiative or to the combat like before they would have automatically gone up to combat. Now, if you want it to go to combat automatically, no big deal. That's still the default load mode, combat and map. You can switch it to add to combat only and not to the map or to add just to the map. Now what's cool about adding it just to the map like this is now instead of having to set up all of these pins with creatures in it that link to encounters to pre set up a map or instead of having to set up everything on the fly, now you can set up the map entirely by just loading tokens on the map and these tokens will save on the map without even having to save the encounter. They just save automatically as part of the map. So if I close this map and I go open it up, you know what, let me use the campaign shortcut like I should. Uh, there it is. And I load it. Look, the tokens are there still. So whatever happens on the map is all saved. Hit points, everything. So now you load up an entire map. So, so those of you that are kind of battle map focused or battle map minded, you can load up the entire map. Let's put some more guys in here. Goblins, bump, bump, cool. And of course you can still drag them in here and it will just give you some options if you want to tweak it, but we'll do that. So I've got some goblins in here. And now this whole map will save already all set up. If we hit this button, it now shows us the player view. So now we see what the players are seeing. If they're playing online and moving themselves around, you can see from their point of view here, this is fantastic for you to be able to see what they're doing. But now the map reflects, instead of you getting in here and then having to you know, read that, oh, okay, there's some poisonous snakes in here, they immediately see the contents of this map. Now, I think both ways can be really great. Sometimes you want to give that description and have everything hidden first. And other times you might want them to immediately see all the tokens. Well, that's why there's another option under settings here where you can have it hidden by default. So as you add new tokens in, they start off hidden. So they'll still be exploring a quote unquote empty map. It will look empty to them until you unhide things. So what I'm gonna do is select the multi-select tool here, highlight these snakes, and I've got hide and unhide. So let's hide them. So Thorn, is, whoops, I've got everybody selected now. Thorn is over here. Let's see what the player sees. They're moving along and they don't see anything. Now he rolled too low on his perception check. His passive perception's too low. So he doesn't notice the snakes until he's standing on top of them. Then as the DM, you will highlight the snakes and show them. Aha, there were snakes in this room all along. Didn't you know it? Now we've shown them, but maybe Thorin's just gonna run away. Well, in that case, maybe we don't need to bother with initiative and everything. But if he does decide to fight them or he can't get away or whatever, you hit this button, bam. The shield puts them into initiative, ready for you to start combat and roll initiative. Perfect. I'm gonna stop. And now we're back out of initiative. So while we're at it, let's take a look at the rest of these uh, little buttons here. So each time I click on it, if I click on it once, I'll get its hit points and its armor class. If I click on the armor class, it will, like I hit it, go 13 to hit, yep, hit it. Then I can type in the damage here. So let's say it took five damage and now, boom, it's dead. I can click on it here, click again to get back to this context menu. I can edit the token. Take it out of combat, boop, you'll see it's out of combat now. Delete it if I don't want it to show up. Quickly add a condition, so this is great, we can add conditions right from here now. So we go, oh, actually, it is grappled, he's got a hold of that snake. Or of course you can do a custom description or other, and we'll save that. And as always, it shows grappled up here, and to get rid of it, click on grappled, it tells you all about it, and you hit the trash can to get rid of that condition. This little blood drop will take you straight to damage. And this will take you to the stat block for the snake. And it's the same with any of these tokens. 
I'm going to remove their initiative here real quick. And I want to point out that all of the various tokens and the things you can put down now, now share the same kind of unified look for all of the options that you can get when you click on them. So if I click on this, this uh, marker, I can edit the marker token, click on it again, I can duplicate it, click on it again, I can delete it, click on it again, and I can look at the reference to it. And again, multiple clicks on the same thing will cycle through showing you different things depending on what it is. So double click on the pin will boom, load the pin, but a double click on your character will take you straight to this context menu and a third click to the damage. Cool. Now while we're talking tokens, I click on this token and edit it. There's now an option for whether or not it is present in the combat tracker. So same as adding it to combat otherwise, cool. And we've got some new options here. We've got scale. So you, we can change the size of this token. Boom. That's a real great, great quick way if uh, somebody gets enlarged, cast on them. Or sometimes you might have a token like a dragon that you want to take up a 3x3 three three square, but its wings should be coming way off of the sides of that 3x3 three three square. Well, that scale makes it real easy to fix that up now. Cool. You've got hostile, friendly, and neutral up here, which I'm not going to get into all of the nitty gritty of how that works, but um, it now will work the way you would expect it to as you're adding into maps. If they're say, staying into maps, adding them into the combat, resetting, the point of it is you can kind of go mark those on your map depending on what they are and they'll behave appropriately in terms of do they disappear when you reset or do they save on the map or not, etc. Another new field is top down. So this is a top down style token. So we want to tell it that it's a top down style token. And that will change some of the things that show up in terms of if it is uh, bloodied or not. Let's see. How does this goblin have zero hit points? Oh, well, let's go change that. So he's got 10. And his current is five. Now what that means is that he is bloodied and you can see that there's like a little bit of blood underneath him down there. Because it's top down, it knows to show that blood underneath him instead of in this circular token. Also, if we kill him, now we get that. So a little left over there. If you want to uh, see all the corpses pile up. We've got a new field here also in terms of elevation so we can set an elevation say okay they are 30 feet flying now and we get a little marker there letting us know that they are indeed up in the air fantastic and last but not least previously you could change the uh, rotation by typing in a rotation number here in degrees to have them point a different way let me grab this guy that's not just blood and bones now Rotation, 90 degrees, save, and they would turn there. Well, now, now you can select them, and with two fingers on, on iOS, you do two fingers to rotate left and right, and they will turn, and on Mac, you can hold shift and scroll up and down, and you can do shift up and down, uh, up and down arrows, if you've got a keyboard on iOS or on Mac, to quickly rotate them. Cool. Now that has been a ton of updates and there are still a ton more, but because there are so many, I'm gonna break this up into video two. So this is all of your uh, tokens and where the new stuff is. In the next video, we're gonna get into fog of war updates, line of sight updates, hex grids, you heard me right, hex grids, weather, easier online games, all sorts of cool stuff. So we'll see you in the next video as always. Hop on over to the Discord if you have questions, leave your questions below and I'll do my best to answer them and have a great game of D&D.